How many years have you been working as a sex worker? So I'm 28 now. I started when I was 20. So eight, eight years. Yeah. Right? And what, what have you learned about the idea, of the, the concept of marriage? Is it a flawed concept? Yeah, I feel like marriage only um, benefits if you're having children. Um, but other than that, I don't know, I kind of see it like a contract, you know. Because you have, you have your clients who are mostly married? Almost all my clients are married. And you they know? sneak in when? After work, before work? Before work, sometimes after, lunch break. So, you know, while the wives are thinking my husband's heading out to work, he's actually coming to book a provider right before work. So, And, and nobody knows about it? Nobody knows. Probably not their, even their best male friends. Yeah. So it makes me look at, you know, marriage very differently. Like, I, I don't want to get married. It's like, what's the whole point in getting married if the guy's going to step out on me anyways? You know, there's temptation everywhere. You got internet, social media, like, so. So what's the solution? I mean, I would love to be in a relationship. Three-year contracts that you have to renew every, every three years or something like that? Renew what? The... Like, like a, a three-year marriage, and we're, we're agreed to stick around for three yeah. years. And after three years, we either part ways or yeah. renew it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just, it's like, some, what I do heard we do? somebody suggest that. Yeah. I mean, I feel like um, a lot of people, they're in their ego when they're in relationships. It's like, that's my husband. It's mine, mine. You don't own that person. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, that person's going to do whatever they want to do. So... I don't know. It's hard to keep that spark alive. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely got to keep that spark alive because I feel like we, we live in a world where people get bored really easily, you know? There's and, that. And then there's also the hormonal changes that happen to yeah. both men and women mm -hmm. and the pressures of life and finances and, and just yeah. age and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Life is tough. Life, life ain't easy. So. But you're still doing it. I'm still doing it. Yeah. You regret it? I don't regret anything in my life. I, I feel like everything in life is is a learning lesson and I will forever be blessed for the lessons that I've I've learned. So I love what I do. You, you love know? it? Yes. I, I help people. Um I feel like not only like intimate wise, but like mentally. I do help a lot of people out. I've interviewed you know? a lot of girls that do what you do. Mm -hmm. And what I've seen is the ones who look at it as I'm providing a service. I'm like a therapist for these guys. I'm mm -hmm. making them feel better. And, and they're not hustlers. They're not con artists. They're not thieves. They're just, mm -hmm. they like men. Mm -hmm. And they're just trying to help them. And they yeah. understand that, you know, they're cheating around their wives and that's not good. But they're going to do it anyway, I guess. They're going to do it anyways. Yeah. What what can I do? I can't really. And and, you know? the, and those the women that are the view it that way. I think there's actually hope of them having a healthy relationship with a man outside of this life, or yeah. or, or even existing. Yeah. You know, while you do it, if a guy can handle you doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's hard for me because I'm single, and you know, I haven't really found anybody that will settle down with me or or take me serious. Probably because what I do for work, it is what it is. Maybe one day I'll find somebody that's secure enough to, you know, but. There's some guys you know. that can live with that. They probably, they probably like it. Yeah. Hey, where are they at? Because I, I can't find them. So. <laughs> yeah, we, you, you talked about this last time. <laughs> yeah, it, it gets lonely. It definitely gets lonely because, you know, in this industry, you lose a lot of friends. You lose a lot of family. I just had a situation recently where I had to kick out a family member because they were pretty much living off of me. They weren't helping me out at all, and they didn't want to work, and they just wanted to just stay in my house all the time and not do shit. So I'm like, you got to go. I'm not going to be the only one here pulling my weight, doing what I do for work, and you're just, you, you know. You make money. You're not using drugs. You're not. No, I'm clean. You're living a pretty straight life except mm -hmm. for this yeah. lifestyle that a lot of people like to judge. Yeah. It's crazy that that a lot of people have such a negative like mindset on the industry. Well, you know, I think they, it's such a charged 
polarizing topic. Yeah. Because everyone hates it because you're cheating on, you're stealing on some, you know, cheating on somebody's husband. But let, let's clarify that. I, we're not stealing nobody's husband. That's number one. You know, your husband goes on these sites and looks for an ad and calls us. You know, I wouldn't have known your husband existed if he didn't reach out to me. So, you know, a lot of people need to stop with that mindset of, oh, they're coming. I'm not trying to home wreck. You know, I'm running a business, an honest living, and I'm just trying to live. You know, like most of the uh, providers in the industry been through foster care, you know, have broken families. Like we're just trying to live. So what I've learned after doing all these interviews is, is I don't know this as a fact, but I suspect if, let's say, prostitution was somehow banned, if it just no longer mm -hmm. existed, there would be a ton of mentally unstable guys that are going to rape people Yes. on the streets looking to do something. Yeah. And that can't be good. Yeah. I feel like if they were to at least decriminalize it everywhere, the crime rate would go down tremendously, you know. I feel like... It's, it's deeper than that. I feel like the government wants to keep the minorities down here. Imagine if they were to legalize it or decriminalize it. You know how many women make so much money would be the breadwinners and then we would be up here? Mm -hmm. They don't want that. As, they as wanna... uh, Jim Sexton, the divorce attorney I interviewed recently said, a woman's attractiveness is the most valuable commodity in our society. Yeah. It is the most valuable commodity. Yeah. And it's like you got you guys have have all the control. At least pretty, pretty at much. least for a time, you know, until until you age out perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. But you're not allowed to really market that. Yeah. Unless you marry a rich guy and divorce him. That's true. But the beautiful thing about sex work I've noticed is you can be old, way older. I there's a lot of women in the ranches that are like 40 and they still make money. Me personally, I wouldn't be, you know, working at the ranches at 40. I think by 35, I'll retire. Um, but I mean, that just goes to show anybody can make money in the industry. You don't have to have your body done. And I think it all stems down to personality, mm -hmm. you know, so. There's a woman for every yeah. every guy. Yeah. I, I'm 100% mm -hmm. certain yeah. of that. Everybody, yeah. you know, so many women I've talked to you said, oh, I need, I need a boob job or I need this, or I need mm -hmm. that, I need. Yeah. No, you, you don't need it. You just need the confidence. Because oh. mm -hmm. yeah. if you have the confidence to know that you're, you are the shit for somebody, yeah. it's all you need. Yep, that's true. So, so many people are so insecure. They just yeah. think they're not enough. Yeah, we all have insecurities. Mm -hmm. We just gotta, you know, fight those, uh, those insecurities. Yeah, no, that's, that's what. Pretty much every video on my ch almost every video on my channel is about. Yeah. But you're working brothels still? No. So I left. Um, I was supposed to go back in June, and I was like, I'm not. I'm good. I. They did something funny to me. Um, I'm over it. But just to shed light on how f funny these establishment establishments move. Um, I had a situation where, um, so this particular house, they do receipts every Saturday. So they call you into the office and they pretty much go over how much money you made for that week. They, I was going to bring the papers, but I didn't know if it was a bit too much. Um, they go over um, the, cl the cuts, um, rent, everything. And then they show you like how much you actually get paid for that week. Um, so I, I go in and you're not supposed to have candles in your room because it's a fire hazard. I don't give a fuck. I, I put money into this establishment. I'm going to have candles. So they found candles and they were like, um, you know, that's ground for immediate termination. So I'm sitting there. And I'm like, fuck, I just got fired for some damn candles. That's what I'm thinking. Um, come to find out, it was just a warning. But as she pulls out the uh, receipt, she's like, you know what? Um, how about I don't pay you for this week and like rips it in front of me? So I'm like 
in my head, I'm like, should I just flip the table right now, like go berserk or just stay calm and collective? Because that week I made a lot of money and I was really counting on that check. I, I was getting like an $8,000 check for that week. And um, I just got up and I, I left the room and I went to the um, owner and I pretty much told him like what the manager did. I'm like, that's very uncalled for. Like, am I getting paid? Like what's going on? Because some ranches, um, they can withhold your check for whatever reason. So that's kind of like legal sex trafficking, if you ask me. You know what I'm saying? There's so much shady business that goes on it, in that It's shady. World. And um, he ended up telling the general manager that I guess I told him my concerns. Ever since then, she started moving very funny towards me. They would randomly search my room, pretty much treat me like a criminal. Why are you searching my room? Because you think I'm, what, stealing money? Money that I made for the company? You guys are stealing money from us. Why are you guys searching our rooms that we pay rent for? That to me just doesn't sit right. I just feel like these ranches need to change how they treat these women. We're not employees. We're keeping the lights on, the water. You guys are living off of the money that we make off our backs. Like, What is the ideal way that this business should be run? It should function if we're going to legalize it or if they're going to legalize it, semi legalize it. Men should not be running this business. I'm sorry. They should not. It should be women that have been sex workers that know the ins and outs. Uh, most of these men that run these houses, they take advantage and want to fuck the girls. And yeah, it's no. Yeah. And we talked about this last time. You do think it should be legalized? Yeah, I, sh I, I believe so. Yeah, it should be legalized, but do it right. You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like, so I come from working in spas in, in New York, right? So how it is out there is it's 250 for a massage and a hand job. The girl keeps her clothes on. Whatever the client wants to do in the room, she can upsell and charge whatever. She keeps 100% of those tips. Now, out of the 250 she gives half to the the uh, spa and she gets the other half. That's how I feel like it should be run. You know, have a set price for massages in Nuru, and then whatever the girl wants to do, fetishes, BDS, she can upsell and have her keep 100% of the tips. You know, these ranches, they want half of the tips. They want half of the party. Then we gotta pay rent and we gotta pay doctor's fees. It's, it's a lot, you know, and then taxes too. It's, out of everything, the girl's only getting like a 10% you know, profit. It's crazy. You guys get checked by a doctor and all that stuff regularly? Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? I mean, you, you mentioned you're, you're doing something now with women that are doing this kind of work. Yeah, so now I mentor other ladies. Um, and I just pretty much tell them the ins and outs, which sites to post on, um, what prices, which cities to, to work and how to answer the phone, screen clients, so. This is for girls that are looking to get into it? Well, most of the girls I've been mentoring are from the ranches. Mm. So a lot of them been word of mouth, telling their friends, hey, you know, Susie's been a great help. I've, I've had a lot of girls where, you know, they text me back after like two weeks, thank you so much, I made 15 grand this week off of, I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> I love it. You know, help out other ladies. You know, I'm not trying to exploit anybody. I'm not trying to fuck these women. I'm just, just one sex work from another. We're just here to, you know, help. You're a good hearted yeah. girl who's trying to help. Yes. But, and you're also still working as well. I am. Yeah, my clients still need me, you know, so I gotta be there for them. And you're happy? I am. Just a little lonely sometimes. It is. Do you think one day you'll be able to separate the connection you've clearly made between money and sex? Or money and love? That's a hard one. I don't know because it's like I don't want to be with somebody that doesn't have anything going for themselves. You have a lot of years of conditioning. Yeah. Oh, that's a hard one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is a hard one. I mean, 
I'm a hopeless romantic. I, I mean, I would love to be in a relationship and have kids eventually. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. What can I do? So. Do you think that because you're a sex worker that you are less desirable? I don't, I don't think so. I don't either. I think there's a sea of men who find you more attractive because you're doing this. Well, I mean... You're probably more experienced. Yes, I'm <laughs> definitely more experienced. Um, what I could say, I, I do love sex. I mean, I, I'm a very sexual person, so I'm a great lover. That's, that's what I can say. So. <laughs> that's a hell of a selling point. Yeah. And I, I'm a good cook, too, so... It's a win-win. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you like to be in five, ten years? Okay, where would I like? Hmm. Have a business, definitely. Um, have my house. Right now I have an apartment. I just moved to Jersey. And it's super expensive. Paying like 3000 a month for that. I could just get a house and pay off mortgage. So definitely want to get a house within the next year. Um, and... Yeah, once I get my business going, um, legitimate, uh, definitely retire from the industry. And if I don't have anybody by then, um, I still want to become a foster mom. Mm, really? Yeah. Yeah. But once I have like my, my business and then I can just like give my businesses to the foster children and then they can run it and, you know. You could move to the counties where prostitution is legalized in Nevada, and you could do it legally. Be a, be a matter. Yeah, that that too. But um, I also want to get into the weed business. Um, I actually just submitted my application in Jersey, so I'm waiting for them to get back to me to grow. Um, so I want to have my foot in different, you know, businesses, not just only that. Um, but yeah. Probably do like a weed infused. Uh, I was also thinking like a, a luxury dining experience as well, because I love to cook, so yeah. You seem like a very good hearted woman to be in this line of work, this lifestyle. You have to, you have to, you can't, um, I believe in karma, you know, and I, I've met a lot of uh, women in the industry uh, that rob their clients, you know, just, just, messed up, broken souls. They're just, I don't know why they would be in the industry in the first place, but um, yeah, you can't rob your clients. You got to treat everybody with compassion. And, Some people know. are just hustlers. They're just born. I, I get born that. that I'm a hustler too, but you know, what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. You don't rob your clients, you know, just don't do that. So there's a lot of girls that do it in the industry and it, it frustrates me because it kind of sheds a bad light on us as a whole. You know, not every provider does that. I sure don't. I don't have to rob my clients. You know, they pay my prices. So, yeah. Have you had sugar daddies? Uh, I have one. I have <laughs> one. He's, I can't mention his name. He's a biotech. Uh, he's well known. Yeah. He's, he's much older. He's like in his 70s. I like older men. So. But that seems to be an ideal relationship for a girl like you. Yeah. Um, but like eventually I, wanna, I want something serious, you know, and he's always like on the go, always like traveling out the country. Sometimes it's hard to get a hold of him. And um, I have love for him because he's such a, I don't know, this is kind of, I don't know if this is weird, but I don't know if I have like daddy issues. My father's never been around. So I think just him taking care of me, that kind of turns me on. Like he's never pressured me to like have sex with him. Like when we first started dating, I didn't want to have sex with him for the first like two months. I was just like, just give me money and and then one day I just realized, I'm like, no, you got to re reciprocate. You know what I'm saying? I can't just keep taking. And, and yeah, I just, we had sex. It was good. 
It's not bad. I can't complain. For men, it's very clear. Men get physically attracted first, and then they become emotionally attached. Mm -hmm. For, For women, they need to be emotionally attached, and then they become physically yes. attracted. Yes, yes. Because mm -hmm. at first, I'm like, wow, he's he's much older than me. Like, he can be my grandfather. Um, but the fact that he's hanging out and yeah, without he's any sex. And he's very respectful. Never, like, never gave me the the creeps. Like, I know there's some guys out there that just be, like, too much. Like, I've, I've done dinner dates, and the guy's, like, all touchy-feely, like, can't keep it. It's like, relax. Just, you know, like, he's not like that at all. So I think that's what um, turns me on about him. And then, of course, he, you know, he takes care of me. You know, whenever I need anything, he'll, you know. So, yeah. He's trying to get me pregnant, which is crazy. I'm like, no, I'm not having your kid. I don't care how much money you are. You're getting older, and eventually, you know, you're going to die. I don't know how, how much longer you have, but I don't want to be stuck raising a kid by myself. And then Is he healthy? He looks, he looks healthy. So you live to be 95. Then it's like he can't run with the kid. It's like, you know, I can't do like certain activities. You know yeah, what I'm saying? No, no, I don't there's know. Always, there's, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Yeah. If you had your life to live all over again, what would you have done differently? Nothing. Nothing. Everything in my life is a lesson learned. So I'm grateful for whatever, you know, I've, everything I've been through with foster care and just, it's made me the person I am today. So forever grateful. It's interesting. So many people I've interviewed have had sometimes some of the most horrible things happen to them. And I ask that question and they all say, I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't. Because it makes you who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I don't want to get emotional, but um, the older I get, I feel like um, I have like a guardian angel. Um, I used to always um, kind of hate my mom and be like, why, uh, why me? Why am I I'm forced to care? Why is this happening to me? Um, well, thank you. But as I got older, I'm like, okay, now I see the bigger picture. Um, God or my guardian angel, the higher up, you know, was protecting me from my mom. My mom was never mentally stable. And I'm over here sitting and saying why this and why that, but there's kids in different countries being sex trafficked, killed. Other people got it worse right now. I mean, look at what's happening in Israel, you know? So I, what I could say is that I haven't had it that bad. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm forever grateful and I, yeah. That's, that's all I can say. I'm and you're, you're still young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of decades mm -hmm. yet. Yeah, and also um, I've been taking a lot of shrooms lately, so it's been clearing my mind and just making me sit and think, like, I can't hate my mom. You know, like, my mom been through a lot of shit. Um, and she was young when she had me. You know, she was, she has three kids. She had her first son when she was 16, and she got pregnant right after. And then she had me when she was 20. So I could only imagine, you know, what she went through. I can't hate her. I have to forgive for myself. For yourself? Yeah. Hating only hurts. Yeah. Only hurts you. Yeah. And it's like, why am I going to dwell in that time period? I'm going to be stuck in that time period for the rest of my life. I have to move on, you know? Yeah. It's hard, but one one day at a time, you know. You're doing great. All right, Susie. Well, it was great seeing you again. Thank you. It was for, great seeing you. Thank you for having me. Sure. Thanks for the little update. And uh, maybe we'll do another one one day. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very All much. Right, take care.